Welcome to Shape by Faith, where we shape our bodies and hearts for God's purposes. I'm really excited about my guest today, Alex Anderson Jago. She is an artist, a graphic designer, and Alex has turned her passion and her talents into a business, and her business is called Blend by Alex. I love that name. Welcome, Alex, to Shape by Faith. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. I'm very, I'm fascinated um, with your paintings and I, I own a few of your paintings and I absolutely love them. And I don't know, there's just something about them that speaks life and there's just a, a happiness um, about the paintings, and, w- and we can explain that when we get into exactly what you're doing with your paintings. But I do want to ask you, were you interested, or have you always been interested in drawing and painting when you were a child? Yeah, pretty much. As soon as I was able to hold a crown, I never really put it down. I think my first canvas were the walls in my parents' kitchen, and I'm sure they weren't too happy about it, but... <laughs> Yeah, we, uh, my sister, she's about two years younger than me, and we had a bunch of Barbies, but I would just rather draw. <laughs> On the walls. I love yeah. that. Love that. Hey, maybe that means you're going to paint murals one day, you know? You never yeah, know. I thought about it. Yeah, well, hey, you were practicing back then. I really yeah. believe, Alex, that, you know, when we were uh, children, that God place those talents in us well really before we were born and he starts to develop those and we don't even know it so we're just kind of drawn to doing um that was kind of a pun on words kind of drawn to doing what he's called us to do all right so do you remember your very first drawing or painting and what was it i don't remember like specifically the very first but i do know my parents have all kinds of artwork around their house of things that i made whenever i was five or six, um, one that really stands out to me is a little drawing of my family. Uh-huh. Um, and it, I don't know, it just kind of makes me laugh every time I look at it, just to see my imagination and everything, because it definitely doesn't really look like people. Right. And yeah, I would draw. It's funny, too, because I paint homes now, and I, growing up, that's really, like, all I would love to draw were homes and floor plans and a bunch of little animal families and things like that, just kind of using my imagination. So I actually um, shared some of those drawings of my homes on my Instagram page about a year ago. Uh-huh. So I figured people would get a kick out of it just because I've always been drawn to homes. That's interesting. Yeah. Um, it really is. I I mean, just to be able to draw the family out as a child, and then now you're painting homes, and they're absolutely gorgeous. And Thank uh, you. you're welcome. So, were there any specific colors um, that you liked as a child? Any specific crayon colors or anything you were drawn to? Honestly, just the brightest and the most colorful, just the basic like red, orange, yellow. Green, blue, purple, all of that. I always wanted everything to be as bright as it could be and as colorful as it could be. And that's very happy. (laughs) Yeah. Did your parents encourage you to use your creativity? Oh, yeah. Yeah, um, pretty much every birthday or Christmas, they would always buy me art sets. I remember my dad bought me a really nice easel for Christmas one year. Um, And then I ended up doing the Eastbridge Art Festival a few years ago. And he went all out. We went to, because I didn't have anything to display my artwork on, and we were kind of thinking about it. And so we ran over to Lowe's and bought these pegboards and made this, like, six-foot trifold display and spray-painted it black. And he just helped me out a lot with that. I could tell he was really excited about it. You know, that's pretty that's pretty important, too, and that's instrumental. Oh, yeah, yeah. In, especially in developing your gifts and talents, Um you know, there's there's people that grow up that they're not encouraged and they're not motivated mm-hmm. by whoever's in their household. So obviously, I mean, I look at it as God had and has his hands on you and he has a whole time and he gave you the parents that he knew that you needed to have. And that's pretty cool. Um, did you take lessons or how did you learn how to paint? I uh 
during my sophomore year of college, like before all of that, I pretty much just used crayons, colored pencils, markers, all of that. I never really painted. Uh huh. But um, whenever I was home for one summer, I just picked it up. I started out with acrylic paint, and I just became kind of addicted to it. And I just taught myself, and I painted some faces. I didn't paint homes yet, and um, I think I did a painting for you, the shape by face portrait. And I still have it. <laughs> <laughs> I was hearing all of that whenever I was trying it out. And then um, my junior and senior year, I transferred over to Western Kentucky, and I decided to major in graphic design and minor in marketing. And so that's whenever I took a bunch of classes. Um, I did take a painting class, and then I took an oil painting workshop in Owensboro a few summers ago. Um And then watercolor, I kind of taught myself how to do it, too. I do watch some YouTube videos to kind of – just to make sure I'm not missing out on anything, but... YouTube's great, isn't it? (laughs) It really is. It's got some good stuff on there. So did that help you when you you took some of those courses in college? Like, did it kind of open you up to, oh, like an aha, like, okay. Um, Was it helpful, or did you like being self-taught? Um, yeah, with my painting classes, it did open me up a lot, um... But sometimes I kind of felt, like with other art classes that I took, like different graphic design classes, I kind of got burned out a little bit um, just because I was forced to kind of design some things that I wasn't really interested in. Uh huh. And you had all these deadlines you had to meet. Um, and so that's, I kind of like took a break from it. Well, I don't know if I like that answer. <laughs> You're good. <laughs> no, it's honest and it's, it's real. Kind of like, no. Yeah. I totally get it. Um, you know, my son, and he needs to, anyway, that's another subject. Um, you know, I, I offered him art lessons when he was, like, in grade school and then in middle school and then in high school, and he never wanted to take them because he said, I want to draw what I want to draw, you yeah. know. And he's like, I don't want someone to tell me what to draw. So I totally get that. Um yeah. How how, how would you describe yourself as an artist? Um, I would say I am definitely more um, kind of like whimsical, light, airy, cartoon looking. Um, I tried to do realistic, but that just did not come natural to me. My Mm -hmm. style that I make now just totally, this is what I've always been drawn to, and it definitely comes natural to me. And I love it. I love your style, Alex. I know when you did that Shape by Faith uh, character, you know, painting, I mean, I still have it. My grandkids absolutely love it. And then you included my husband in a hot air balloon. That was awesome. (laughs) In the time that you uh, you also painted a lion, and, you know, I'm all about the lion. I love um, the lion and what it represents, the Lion of Judah. And I know you painted that very colorful. I love your style. Um, so what kind of style would you say you had? Uh, more whimsical? I mean, is there anything else to describe the style that you're using? Yeah, um, I guess I would just stick with, like, whimsical and kind of, like, cartoonish. Um, it's definitely not realistic. And I've also noticed that my paintings used to be a lot more... Uh, like brighter and colorful and now because that's like back whenever I wanted my bedroom walls to be painted neon pink and orange (laughs) growing up and now I live in a house and all of the walls are white and I've also noticed that my art has kind of changed with that too Mm -hmm. it's definitely toned down a little bit and it's a little more neutral it's still colorful but even if you um like scroll down on my Instagram page from a year ago you can tell it like kind of gets more and more colorful and brighter but I don't know I'm kind of drawn to like the more neutral right and I I think as an artist as you go through different seasons in your life I would imagine you know your artwork would change with it I I love what you're doing now I I think it's very inspirational Um, Alex we're going to take a break okay so when we come back we're going to hear more 
from Alex Anderson Jago and Blend by Alex. So everyone stay tuned. Welcome back to Shape by Faith, where we shape our bodies and hearts for God's purposes. On the phone is Alex Anderson Jago. She's an artist and a graphic designer, and she's turned her passion and talents into a business. And we're going to talk about that this segment, and it's called Blend by Alex. Um, Alex, thanks for sharing with us, you know, how you got into painting. And obviously, God gave you that talent and that gifting as a very young child. I want to ask... Um, when did painting become a passion for you and launch you into your professional career as an artist? I mean, were you working before you did this? Yes. Yeah, I um, graduated from Western back in 2016 and then immediately started working for my dad's insurance Uh company. And I worked there for about three years. Um, And I loved that job and everything, but I just kind of, it kind of stressed me out just because it didn't really, it wasn't suited for my personality. I'm definitely more introverted and shy and all of that. And just having to deal with customers every day. Just, <laughs> just, yeah. Um, and so I kind of always thought about, man, it would be so awesome to just start my own business or just paint all day. But I didn't really know what I would paint or what I would design. I didn't, and that worried me. So I just kept working And then um, I'm also very thankful because my husband, he's very encouraging and supportive. And he kept telling, like, he could tell that I wasn't happy. And he just kept pushing, like, you should open up your own business. You should do it. And I just kind of figured, you know what, like, now is the time to do it because we don't really have any major responsibilities right now. We don't have any kids or anything like that. And if it doesn't work out, because I was just going to try it for the year. Right. And so if it didn't work out for that year, then I can always go back and find a job somewhere else. So but, obviously it's working for you, right? Yeah. I'm gonna, yeah. <laughs> thankfully. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, you launched as an artist and uh, what what are some things you started painting? And, and I know that you went from acrylic to watercolor and watercolor is mm-hmm pretty difficult isn't it as an artist I mean I mean how did you launch into that yeah that's what I've always heard um so I was very intimidated to try watercolor out but I've always been drawn to watercolor paintings and my sister actually had a watercolor set that she tried to do whenever she was bored in school Uh and she hated it and so she gave it to me and I think it sat in my closet for about two years because I just Didn't think I'd be good at it. I was scared to try it. All I ever heard was how hard it was. And then one weekend, I just decided to pull it out. And actually, the first thing I painted was a picture of our house. Oh, wow. And then um, I did it, and I looked at it, and I was like, that doesn't look too bad. And I sent a picture (laughs) to my parents, and they were kind of like, well, that could be your moneymaker. And so that's pretty much how it all started. I painted a, a picture of our house, and then I think a friend saw it. They wanted to buy a couple of home paintings, and then... It just took off. Wow. Okay, so you definitely developed your art personality. And again, I I truly believe that it's God nudging us like, you know, your husband was encouraging you, your Mm -hmm. parents encourage you, and God was just like, it's time, Alex, to get that watercolor set out. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah, I definitely wouldn't have done this without their encouragement. So, Well, sometimes we sit on things for a while until that light bulb moment like, oh, what do we have to lose, you know? And you were at that mm-hmm. point. And, and like you were talking about your mindset, I think that stops us a lot of times. I think that fear factor that we put upon ourselves, like, ah, uh, I don't, you know, I don't know if I can do this. And so I'm just not going to do it. Um, and a lot of perfectionists do that, Alex. Like, you know, they don't attempt something unless they can do it with the excellence. But I'm so glad you did pick up that watercolor set because I love my house painting that sits in my house. (laughs) It's an 8 by 10 Absolutely love it. It looks exactly like our home. And and you're so detailed also. I mean, you put those little personal touches and detail. Does that come natural to you to do that? Did you have to learn that technique? Honestly, it just comes natural to me. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. no, I, I believe it does, too. Okay, so you are, you're capturing on Canvas beautiful memories for people, of their homes, and I guess, you know, 
you started doing that as a child. You know, when you were talking about that you were drawing and painting as a child and that you would draw your family and home. So start it way back then. I want to ask you, do you have an inspirational story of someone who was like deeply moved or touched by one of your home paintings? Because I know a lot of times people um, will give them as gifts and that's what I've done. And we could just talk, you know, for an hour about that, about how touched someone was. But does anything in particular stand out um, of of someone that was really moved by your painting? Yeah, I um, have always heard of how people reacted. People have told me that they cry and all of that, and that just warms my heart so much. And that just kind of reminds me of why I'm doing uh, what I'm doing. And then, yeah, I've always heard about it, but then one of my friends sent me a video of her grandmother opening up her house portrait, and her reaction just totally, uh, it just made me so happy. And so it just reminded me, like I said, this is why I'm doing what I'm doing, just Mm -hmm. um, because it is just like one little painting can capture so many memories. I think she lived in that house for about 30 years, so that's 30 years of treasured memories wow and you know that is so personal i mean it's your home and i know around christmas time you're super busy right i mean you're you're taking orders and and people are um you know giving those as presents like how do you like do you paint a lot of homes at one time or do you pace yourself or how do you do that like let's say you get in I'm sure last Christmas you got in a lot of orders. Yeah, and actually my Christmas list is filling up already, so I'm going to try to tell people to go ahead and get their orders in. But I usually just kind of, um, I'll do maybe a few paintings a day and kind of draw them out and then paint. And while the paint's drawing on one painting, I'll sketch out the other. And it's kind of just, I just like rotate them around. Right. So as far as the home goes, like, do you take, like, people, do they give you pictures of the home or or how do you, how do you know how to paint the home exactly? Yeah. So if they live in Owensboro, I'm happy to go and snap a picture of the house. I've actually done quite a few homes all over the state or the country, um, some in Texas, Washington, D.C., Virginia, Hawaii. Wow. And all they have to do send me a picture of it and then I'll mail it to them so they don't have to live local to have a painting done by me and you also you you have an option where you can also matte and frame is that correct right yeah every painting automatically comes matted but I've realized that sometimes people don't want to deal with having to go out and buy a frame they don't know what would look good or anything like that so I just offer the basic black white and gold that they can choose from those colors and I'll frame it for them. And I love that. And during a time like this, you know, it's good to have that already done. And so you don't have to go out and worry about it. Um, How would you say that you blend your faith with your talents in painting? I would say, um, I know first Corinthians, first Corinthians says to do everything in love. And so, I mean, every day, I'm very thankful to be able to do what I love. Um, and then, honestly, sometimes I'll have a, pen, or a painting totally finished, and if I don't like the way that it looks, I'll just scrap it and start all over. And sometimes I'll have to redo a painting two or three times just because I want it to be absolutely perfect wow. for the homeowner. Well, and, and I know you did one uh, for free for Habitat for Humanity, Mm -hmm. And Virginia Braswell, I mean, she's been the director for a long time. She was, Alex, she was just like overwhelmed um, to get that picture, you know, of the office. I mean, it 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 just reminds her of of her purpose, like what she's called to do by God. And it was it was like the best gift ever. And I've thanked you, but I want to thank you again for doing that. And I'm not trying to promote, hey, Alex is going to do free paintings for everyone, but I just, you know, you also do work, you know, and you have done work for free. Um, we're going to take a break, and when we come back, we're going to hear more from Alex Anderson-Jago coming up next. 
Welcome back to Shape by Faith. We shape our bodies and hearts for God's purposes. And Alex Anderson Jago knows her purpose. I mean, God is definitely uh, giving you, Alex, that talent as um, an artist and as a painter and even in your own business, Blend by Alex. I love what you're doing. I love that you're painting um, homes and businesses and all sorts of things. And God's going to... You know, just open up more doors. I can just feel it, Alex. So I want to ask you how you uh, view yourself maturing as a person and as an artist from the time you got serious about, okay, hey, you know, I think I'm going to pursue this. So how have you developed and matured? Yeah, um, it's honestly like kind of relieving to know that you found your purpose and it definitely made me more confident. I used to be so shy and I still am, but I've definitely come a long way just because um, I know that I'm doing what God wants me to do and it just brings me so much happiness and I love what I'm doing every day and it just makes me so confident and yeah, absolutely. And and I've known you for a while and I've watched, you know, from the outside how you have developed as a beautiful young lady from like you said you you were you were kind of shy, but now there is there's this glow about you, Alex, and this confidence and and you've got a very supportive family and a supportive husband and you have found that sweet spot, you know. Um yes. yeah. Yes, and not everyone out there knows what their purpose is. So how would you encourage someone listening to go ahead and pursue it? What what would you say to them? Yeah, if this is something that they want to pursue full-time, I would not advise them to just go out and quit their job on a whim. This definitely started out as a side hustle for me. Um, I thought about it for a pretty long time before I decided to go ahead and like make the jump. Um, I would test out the market and kind of see if what I was selling was working. And once I realized it could replace my income, I just decided to go for it. Right. And really, you know, what's the worst thing that can happen if you're still working and then you're trying out and you're, you're trying to pursue those things, you know, it's just like, kind of like writing a book. You're not going to quit your job to write a book. You know, right, you're going to still right. work and you're still going to write. Um, where can people see your work, Alex, and where can they contact you and, and order um, for Christmas or order for birthdays or any event or just for themselves? Right. So I'm working on a website right now. Hopefully that'll be ready in a month or two. But for now, I have Instagram and Facebook. Uh huh. It's just Blend by Alex. And that's where I take all of my orders. People can just message me. They can text me, call me, however they want to reach me. I'll take that order. (laughs) So you you already said that people are already ordering, right, for the holidays? Right. Yeah, they started ordering a few months ago. So try to tell people to get on it just before I run out of room on my list. But you are pretty fast. I will say that. I I know (laughs) when I ordered... My house painting from you, I mean, I was just like, wow, she's fast. Um, so anyway, so everyone get their orders in. Blend by Alex. Alex, I want to thank you so much for coming on 